portals in 3D mode view. In the old times, about 1200 BC, there was a king by the name of Hyperion who wanted to free the Titans. Basically, he felt betrayed by the gods, and the Titans were the only ones who could kill the gods. And, yeah, he wanted some assistance for the whole, you know, god-slaying business. So he's going around seeking, I believe it's called the Bow of Espero or something along those lines, and... Along the way, he comes across a preacher who I swear is played by Ron Paul. And after dousing him in holy oil from what appears to be a cup that never actually runs out of its contents, he sets him on fire making it clear how he feels about politics or Republicans. The only person who can stop Hyperion is Theseus, the bastard child of a raped village woman who doesn't actually have any other real defining qualities than yeah, those. Oh, also, he was sort of trained by Zeus, who took on the appearance of John Hurt to train him. Yeah. Basically, the gods can't interfere with, you know, the affairs of man, so unless the titans are released, the gods are not to interfere. So it's up to human beings to actually settle things. This is basically 300 with gods. Yeah, it's, I guess, a spiritual successor to 300, and it doesn't particularly hide the fact that it was made purely because that movie made money. It's... The obvious main draws are the visuals, the style, and the action. It does have some really nice visuals, and the stylization is quite nice. Although one has to wonder if this is a universe where every article of clothing is produced with the sole purpose of being as impractical and or gaudy as possible. The the headwear in this movie redefines the term preposterous. I also wonder if about half the characters in this have secret identities that they have to hide because they're wearing masks. Okay, I, there's some sort of explanation about like Hyperion's forces hide their identity in masks. If they kill everyone they meet, why would they need to hide their identity? Whatever. Now, the visuals, yes, they are quite nice, although I would say that there is a, a shortage of images that really stand out and that really stick with you. And in that regard, I would say 300 did a better job. And the same goes for the action. 300 did it better. This does have some really great action, but I'd say about half of the action, as well as, you know, tense scenes, are these short stretches where they just barely get started in, you know, a fight scene before it's over. And, yeah, I don't know, it just seems odd to me. It seems like, you know, let's be honest, this movie exists for the action, so relish in it. 
it does, at some points, relish in it, fortunately. The action is well choreographed and fun, you know, it is, it's an entertaining film. It's a, a an empty film, but it's an entertaining one. The action also does somewhat suffer from occasionally being repetitive. There is a sequence where one character uses a hammer to bash the heads of opposing soldiers. This character does not do this just a couple of times, they do it maybe ten times, and this is all they do for that sequence with the hammer. There's, there's no variance to it, you know, it's just bashing in one head after another. And attractive though it is, and nicely gory and fun, it does get to be repetitive and feels... Yeah, it's there's a little bit of a lack of creativity, maybe. The... We have a decent enough villain in Caveman Mickey Rourke. Looks like a caveman, behaves like a caveman. You know, I have a, I have a theory. They didn't tell him to act. They didn't direct Mickey Rourke. He showed up on the set, they turned on the cameras, and Mickey Rourke was Mickey Rourke. And that's just it, you know. Half the time he's on screen, he is eating loudly and stuff that gets stuck in his big, bushy, unshaven beard, you know, and it's stuff that he has to spit out as well. You know, he looks and acts as nasty as they could get away with, really. Uh, there aren't particularly memorable characters. Part of this movie is spent with Theseus traveling with a a monk who cut off his tongue, a virgin oracle. Why are virgin oracles always hot, by the way? And a thief who has no morals, played by Stephen Dorff. And yeah, you know, they're they're just not really memorable. They're they're present. Yeah. The... The pacing is pretty decent. I really wasn't bored for any of the movie. There's a distinct lack of intentional humor. I mean, there, there are a couple of things that are meant to be funny, but they're not funny. There are a couple of things that are meant to be intimidating, that are funny, that are just comical. There's this... this big guy. Remember the monstrosity in 300? You know, there were a couple of them, but the one on the battlefield, you know, the big one with the, that they have in chains. The version of him in this movie is a big guy who has... I'm just gonna come out and say it. He has a helmet that looks like the head of a bull, complete with the horns, constructed entirely of barbed wire. Okay, that is kind of badass. But it, yeah, and he roars. He roars. In general, there are a couple of things where they have this kind of imagery of a bull, and I don't know, I, I guess, you know, the aggressiveness is supposed to be, I don't know, it just, it comes off silly at points. The movie is, it's very by the numbers. The, the characters are supposed to be, you know, they're, they're supposed to be meaning to their actions and they're supposed to be character arcs. But it just doesn't work, you know. It The film doesn't actually compel you with anything other than its visuals and its action. And like the movie as a whole, 
it's empty. You know, the visuals and the action is completely empty. It's pretty, but it doesn't hold any... Yeah, you know, there, there's no impact to it, really. The... The 3D is pretty good. It's very subtle. There, There's very little of this movie that forces the 3D on you, where it's like shoving stuff at the camera, at your face. It mostly just has the effect of immersing you, and that is something the movie desperately needed. The... Some, some of the sequences of action have these big, chaotic scenes shot, shot in wide angles with, with, you know, you see a lot of things going on. And again, you know, it, it, it seems like it should have more impact than it actually does. The editing is pretty good. And, you know, for, for being empty, the action and visuals genuinely are, you know, impressive. It, it really does get you going, I would say. I suppose that just about covers it. If you're, if you like 300 and you like more of that, yeah, sure. If you didn't like 300, this movie is not for you at all. But if you like 300, yeah, I'd say, you know, give it a go. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.